if you want to enter East Pakistan right now, I can guarantee you a loss 100%. These words were said by Indian Army Chief General Sam Manikshaw, who articulated his views without any pretense and gave it to Prime Minister Indira Gandhi, who was mulling a military solution to East Pakistan's concerns. In the words of General Manikshaw himself, Prime Minister Indira Gandhi's face was red with anger when he presented the reality. He stopped her to talk to him in private. When General Manikshaw offered to resign, Indira pacified him and asked him the reality. General Sam Manikshaw said, My job is to fight to win, not to lose. If given the proper time to fight, victory will be ours. On this day, the foundation of that historic victory of 1971 was laid in a war, the preparations for which had started from April itself. However, not many remember the precursor to the war. Perhaps a bigger war set the foundation for a massive victory that was to come, the Battle of Garibpur. Hi and welcome. You're watching TFI English, the national socio-political analysis arm of the TFI Media Group. I'm Siddharth, your host. In this video, I will tell you all about the Battle of Garibpur. Let's begin. Today is the golden jubilee of Battle of Garipur, fought in 1971 as a precursor to the 1971 Bangladesh Liberation War. Not many know or have heard about the war, but its importance in the grander scheme of things cannot be understated. Before the war was officially announced on the 2nd of December in 1971, the Indian forces fought on the Eastern Front and demoralized the Pakistani forces. Moreover, the battle was fought barely 100 kilometers from Kolkata. No battle has ever taken place this close to a city and probably never will. In the early hours of November 21, the 14th Punjab Regiment, supported by PT-76 tanks from 45 Cavalry and Mukti Bahani, moved in to capture the areas around Garipur inside the Pakistani territory. Mukti Bahani, the rebel forces in Bangladesh, trained by India, had already shown the Pakistani forces that they were no mere pushovers. Taking the rebels into confidence, the Indian Army forced the Mitro Bahini. However, the Indian Allied forces were facing Pakistan's 107 Infantry Brigade 6th and 21st Punjab Battalions, supported by the 49th and 55th Field Regiments and three independent armoured squadrons. The massive tank regiment posed a stiff challenge and could have potentially deflated any other ordinary armed forces. However, not so much the Indian forces. The move was supposed to be a surprise. But following the skirmish with patrol troops of both armies the previous day, Pakistan was alerted to this impending attack. They moved their American tanks towards Garipur, while the Indian forces in the dark and foggy night prepared for a counter-attack. The first attack came at 6 am and the squadron commander of C Squadron 45 Cavalry, Major D.S. Narang, was well prepared. He had skillfully deployed his PT-76 light tanks to defend the newly captured areas. The much inferior PT-76 tanks, with little to no armour, proved to be a handful. The agility of the tanks meant that the armoured squadrons had a hard time tracking their positions. Moreover, the Indian forces, led by superior leaders, displayed astute positional awareness, cornering the opposition into a tiny space. An Indian Army officer was quoted as saying by Times of India, The Pakistani tanks had US-made tanks and attacked Indian positions. The Indian light tanks were not considered a match for the far more advanced Shafis. The Pakistani infantry was also supported by heavy artillery. There was a close quarter battle through the night and the Pakistanis were forced to retreat by the morning of November the 22nd. They left behind 11 destroyed Shafi tanks and 3 in running condition. Seemingly losing the battle, Pakistan immediately pressed the panic button and called for its fragile air force to bail out its battered tank regiment. Around 3 pm, three F-86 Sabres were deployed by the Pakistan Air Force to combat the bolstered Indian Allied forces. However, India had already taken into consideration of an aerial fight and immediately dispatched four fallen Nats, a British compact swept swing subsonic fighter aircraft, to intercept the timid PAF attack. The IAF NAS brought down two of them over Bongao and forced another one to fly back. No IAF aircraft were lost and in the first aerial duel between the two countries, Pakistan was left nursing its deep wounds. Such was the psychological damage that Pakistan did not dare use its air force in the war to come in 20 days' time. Such was the terror of IAF NAS that in army folklore, the aircraft is now referred to as the Sabre Killers. Flight Lieutenant M.A. Ganapati and Flight Officer Donald Razaris led the NAT section while the MiGs were flown by Formation Leader Flight Lieutenant 
Roy Andrew Messi and flying officer S.F. Suarez. What stood out was the fact that a single battalion had been able to destroy an entire Pakistani brigade supported by an air force and artillery. This and victories in other battles nearby, like the Battle of Hili, ensured that the northern sector of East Pakistan was virtually in the hands of Mitro Bahini before the war was declared. India and Bangladesh were victorious in the battle and Pakistan ran away with the tail between its legs. Eight Chafi tanks were demolished while three tanks were taken into position by India. However, that is not to say India did not suffer any casualties. Joint Commander Lieutenant Colonel T.S. Sidhu was badly injured while Major Daljeet Singh Narang was martyred while fighting the enemy. He was awarded the country's second highest wartime honour, the Mahavir Chakra. A movie regarding the Battle of Garipu titled Pippa is in the offing based on the book The Burning Shafis written by Brigadier Balram Singh. The movie is being produced by Ronnie Screwwala and Siddharth Roy Kapoor with actor Ishan Khattar set to star in it. People need to know that against the odds and backstacked against the wall, the Indian forces dared to do the unthinkable. It not only took on the unthinkable but also emerged proudly victorious.